What if I told you that there is an FDA-approved medication that can delay kidney failure by years, but most PKD or polycystic kidney disease patients don't know if they qualify? Here's the truth. Treatment for polycystic kidney disease has transformed in just the last decade. We actually have targeted therapies that slow cyst growth, advanced dialysis options that fit your lifestyle, and transplant outcomes that are better than ever. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. This is episode three of my six-part PKD series. In episodes one and two, we covered what polycystic kidney disease is and how to slow its progression naturally. Today, you're going to learn about every evidence-based treatment option, from tolvaptan to transplant, so you know exactly what to expect and can have informed conversations with your doctor. If you're new to the channel here, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like and share button and the bell. I try to share evidence-based kidney health strategies every week. And this treatment guide on PKD could change the trajectory of your kidney disease. Here's what we're going to cover today. The breakthrough medication that targets cyst growth, emerging therapies on the horizon, when dialysis or transplant becomes necessary, and what the future holds for PKD treatment. Let's dive in. Let's start with Tolvaptan, the breakthrough treatment. This is a game changer. Tolvaptan is the first and only FDA-approved medication that targets the root cause of polycystic kidney disease. Here's how it works. Remember from episode two, we talked about how vasopressin drives cyst growth. Tolvaptan is a vasopressin 2 receptor antagonist. So it blocks vasopressin's action in the kidney tubules, lowering cyclic AMP and slowing cyst expansion. Think of it this way. It's turning down the pump that fills those water balloons we talked about in the previous two episodes. Here's the finding that changed everything. The Temple 3-4 trial followed 1,445 adults with early autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease for three years. Well, that reduced the rate of kidney volume increase by 49% and slowed kidney function decline by about 1.3 milliliters per minute per 1.73 square meters. This was compared to placebo. Let me put this in perspective. For someone whose kidneys are growing rapidly, tolvaptan can delay kidney failure by several years, sometimes even a decade. There's the follow-up reprise trial, and this extended these findings to people with later stage disease, confirming slower kidney decline over 12 months. Now, it's important to be realistic on this data. Tolvaptan doesn't stop the progression of polycystic kidney disease, but it can slow it down and delay kidney failure significantly. Let's talk about the reality of taking this medication. It's important to understand the side effects. Tolvaptan isn't easy to tolerate for everyone. The most common side effects are as follows. There's increased urination up to five to six liters per day in some patients, and that means Frequent bathroom trips, especially at night. There's excessive thirst and dry mouth. You'll need to drink significantly more water. There can be fatigue from dehydration and the constant need to stay hydrated. And about 5% of patients can develop elevated liver enzymes. And this is why liver function tests must be checked regularly before starting therapy and then monthly for 18 months and about every three months thereafter. The question is, who should consider tolvaptan? Generally speaking, tolvaptan is offered to adults ages 18 to 55 with rapidly progressive autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. When it comes to having this discussion with your doctor, we'll look at the imaging showing fast kidney growth. This is in medical lingo. It's classified as Mayo class C. To one genetic profile will also be looked at indicating this aggressive disease or they're going to look for a kidney function decline greater than five mils per minute per year. Here's the bottom line. This isn't a one-size-fits-all medication. Some people tolerate it well and see it as a small price for years of preserved kidney function. Others, though, they find the side effects 
just too disruptive and they can't tolerate it. But for the motivated patients with aggressive disease, the benefits often outweigh the drawbacks. And as always, the decision should be made carefully with your kidney doctor, with your kidney team, weighing your specific disease progression against your quality of life. All right, question for all of you. Are you currently taking Colvaptan or has your kidney doctor discussed it with you? Drop a comment below and I would love to hear your experience or your questions on this topic. Let's switch gears and look at some emerging therapies on the horizon. Beyond Tolvaptan, researchers are testing several treatments that work on different pathways. There is somatostatin analogs. These are drugs like octreotide and lanreotide, and they reduce fluid secretion in cysts by inhibiting cyclic ARP. There's a 2023 meta-analysis which showed modest benefit in slowing kidney volume growth, but unfortunately, there was no consistent impact on kidney function decline. And that's why they're not widely used yet, but the research continues. Then there are mTOR inhibitors. mTOR inhibitors are drugs like serolimus, everolimus. They initially showed promise in animal models, but human studies unfortunately found limited effectiveness and more side effects. At this time, they are not recommended outside of research trials. Then there are SGLT2 inhibitors, and this is where things get very exciting, especially for me. SGLT2 inhibitors like empagliflozin, dapagliflozin, are now being studied for PKD because they reduce tubular stress and intraglomerular pressure in other kidney diseases. In other words, they lower the stress on the kidneys. Early data from pilot trials are encouraging and larger studies are ongoing. Now, if the results hold up, we may have some more proven therapies that are easier to tolerate than tolvaptin. And keep in mind, SGLT2 inhibitors are used widely already in the realm of kidney disease. Even with these impressive medications, vasopressin lowering, lifestyle interventions, they still remain essential. Remember, high water intake, low sodium diet, blood pressure control, those three are still the foundation of treatment. And medications are going to amplify those efforts, but they're not going to replace them. Let's talk about managing symptoms and complications. Even with optimal therapy, polycystic kidney disease can cause symptoms that need attention. Pain is often due to enlarged kidneys, bleeding cysts or stones. And you can manage these symptoms with Tylenol rather than NSAIDs because NSAIDs can harm kidney blood flow. And if there is severe localized cyst pain, there are procedures like aspiration or taking the fluid out of the cyst or sclerotherapy to go ahead and essentially reduce the supply going to the cyst. Infections are another common problem that occurs, especially cyst infections, and they don't always respond to typical antibiotics. Fluoroquinolones, they penetrate cyst walls the best, and they're often the treatment of choice. Then there's kidney stones, which occur in 20 to 30% of polycystic kidney disease patients. And this is another reason staying well hydrated and low sodium diet are the key preventive steps. Liver cysts, they generally don't require treatment unless they cause pain or they're causing compression. Keep in mind, your nephrologist can help you navigate each of these symptoms as they arise. Let's switch now to talking about when dialysis or kidney transplant becomes necessary. Unfortunately, even with optimal management, some patients will eventually reach kidney failure. But here's what you want to know. Preparation early makes a huge difference in outcomes. When it comes to dialysis, remember you have choices. You can choose between hemodialysis, which is usually three times per week at a center, or peritoneal dialysis, which is daily exchanges done at home. And neither one of these, it replaces the full function of your native kidneys. And oftentimes I tell patients the choice depends on your lifestyle. In center hemodialysis, it offers supervision and structure, while home options like peritoneal dialysis, they give you greater freedom and independence. But here's what most people don't realize. 
transplant is the best long-term option. For most PKD patients, transplant offers the best quality and length of life, and the outcomes with kidney transplant are exceptional. Five-year graft survival, new kidney transplant survival is 85 to 90% in major transplant registries. And here's the part that surprises people. PKD does not recur in the transplanted kidney. You're getting a healthy organ with normal genes and the disease stays with the old kidneys. So living donation from relatives or friends provides the best outcomes and allows for planned surgery before dialysis becomes necessary. This is called preemptive transplantation, and it offers significant advantages in long-term health. What about your old kidneys? For people with very large native kidneys causing pain or taking up too much space, there's something called nephrectomy, which is surgical removal of the kidney. This can be performed at the time of transplant or is occasionally done in a separate procedure beforehand to make room for the new kidney. But the key message is this. If you're approaching kidney failure, start the transplant evaluation early. Getting on the list sooner gives you more options and better outcomes. For the future of polycystic kidney disease treatment, remember research into PKD is accelerating rapidly. Scientists are exploring all sorts of things. There's gene therapy to correct the PKD1 and PKD mutations at the source, RNA interference to silence the abnormal gene activity before the cyst even formed. There's stem cell repair to restore damaged kidney tissue being studied, and AI-assisted drug therapy to identify new small molecules that target cyclic AMP signaling or how cysts are metabolized. Remember, these aren't science fiction. They're in active research right now. And truly, they're giving genuine hope that in the near future, we'll have treatments that stop polycystic kidney disease before kidney failure develops. The landscape is changing fast. Let's bring all of this together. Treatment for polycystic kidney disease has transformed. Tolvaptan is currently the only FDA-approved therapy proven to slow down the growth of cysts and delay kidney failure. It can reduce kidney volume increase by 49% and slow kidney function decline by 1.3 mils per minute per year. Blood pressure control and hydration are critical. Medications amplify this, but they don't replace lifestyle. There's emerging therapies like SGLT2 inhibitors that are showing real promise. And if kidney failure does develop, transplantation offers exceptional long-term outcomes, 85 to 90% graft survival at five years. The key is preparation. Work closely with your nephrologist, stay informed about your options and start planning early if kidney replacement becomes necessary. If this treatment guide helped you understand your options, please hit that like button, subscribe for our weekly evidence-based kidney health content, and make sure you share this with someone who's living with polycystic kidney disease. This information could really change the trajectory of their disease. Next, in episode number four, we're going to cystic kidney disease through diet and lifestyle and what really works according to science. I'm going to show you the specific daily habits that protect your kidneys and complement medical treatment. What is your biggest question about PKD? Drop it in the comments below so I can be sure to address that in the future videos. And if you're on Tolvaptan, considering transplant, curious about emerging therapies, drop it in those comments below. And the last and final thing is I always end every video by expressing gratitude and kindness to others. I want to thank you for joining me on this journey and to ask you to always practice gratitude and kindness, not just for others, but also for yourself by taking care of your health. Thank you everyone for watching this. I'll see everyone next time.